One of the big talking points in Formula One at the moment, both in public and especially behind the scenes, is what Mercedes are up to with their wheels, these new innovative wheel rims they've been running of late in the season. And when they introduced the design, it seemed to tie in with an upturn of form, but they've not been running them recently. And there's been talk of clarifications from the FIA, threats of protests from other teams. So we've got Jake Boxall leg with us now, our new technical editor who's only joined recently. Welcome, Jake. Thank and you. one of your first tasks we've assigned to you was working out what the hell is going on with these <laughs> wheel rims. So you've spent plenty of time on it. Where have we got to with our understanding and what we know about the design and what it's supposed to achieve? Well, to be honest, until this week, we've been still receiving new bits of information. So it's taken a little while to work it out, but I think we can just boil it down to the main salient points and then explain a bit further. So let's break it in out into the what and the why Mercedes are running it. So what are they doing? They're just quite simply trying to blow air through their wheel assembly. And why? Uh, it's you know to try and keep the temperatures in the rear wheels a little bit cooler, try and manage those temperatures a little bit, make sure their tyres don't overheat more, more than anything. So I think it's good to explain the how. Quite simply, it's probably easiest just to follow the airflow and go through that. So what we know is, like any rear hub, you have the airflow going through that, through a, through a duct, and then that's usually used to cool the brake assembly. And they're also using it to blow through the little locating holes that you usually get on the brake assembly. These are there to ensure that when the rim is being put on during a pit stop, you have the little locating pins on there and you're able to put the wheel on pretty quickly. And there are more holes than there are locating pins. So the spare ones, these uh, correlate directly with, uh, with a spacer that Mercedes have attached to the rear wheels. So the spacer itself, it's just basically a little shim that sits on the mounting face of the wheel. And what it's got, it's got these locating pins, which I talked about, but it's also got uh, a series of little perforations. And that's what Mercedes have been using to try and get airflow through the wheel and direct it outwards. So it's been a little bit of a controversial addition. Um, Mercedes have used that to almost limit the amount of air going through the tire as well, or through the wheel rather as well. Um, underneath there's a series of little holes, you know, these holes are also there for the locating pins, but they're also uh, bored out to save a little bit of weight as well. And it almost acts as like this central chamber, if you like. Mm. And it's here where the airflow goes through and it's extracting the excess heat from, uh, from the wheel rim through uh, two different sets of holes, holes on the outside of the, the wheel rim between the little blanked out portions of the spokes and also uh, a set of holes that are inside uh, next to the axle. And so when the wheel rotates, um, this airflow is then drawn out through the wheel and drawn out through uh, a series of almost holes, if you like, uh, little openings on the wheel nut. And then it's cast away outwards and, you know, pushed outboard and is carried away by the air velocity sort of relative to, uh, to the car's movement. So that's basically the mechanics of behind it. Mm. And the reason they're doing it is, as I say, manage those tyre temperatures, manage the wheel temperatures, because there's a sort of difference between the tread temperature and the core temperature of the tyre. If they're too different, then you're going to get a lot of blistering. If your tread temperature is way too high, then you're going to get a lot of thermal degradation as well. So Mercedes need to keep the whole tyre body, if you like, a consistent temperature and within the sort of best operating conditions possible. We know that the Pirellis are quite capricious tyres, <laughs> so it takes, they've got a little, very small window of opportunity to use them. And so Mercedes are just trying to make the most of that. Now the strange thing here, of course, is that Mercedes has not been running the design in the last yeah. couple of races, and it's the spacer that's been removed rather than completely changing the rims themselves. Yeah. Why the sudden decision not to run them? There's talk of Ferrari being interested perhaps in protesting, and there's been comparisons to something Red Bull was doing in 2012, but the FAA has made a differentiation between the Red Bull design that is outlawed and the Mercedes design that up to now, Charlie Whiting is still saying in his eyes it is legal, but Mercedes seem to be very careful about running the risk of a protest while there are championships to seal, basically. 
Well, the reason it's been declared okay is because the FIA views it as not a purely aerodynamic device. They see the spacer itself as being a spacer to keep the wheel rim and the brake assembly pretty separate, um, which I'll go into in a sec. But also they're aware that there's a little bit of uh, bleeding of temperature as they've put it in a directive that they released before Mexico. Um, they didn't run it in Austin because they were expecting Ferrari to protest or they were just trying to cover that off um, and didn't run it in Austin. And in Mexico, as I say, they got this directive from the FIA that said they were happy with the design, they were happy that the spacer acts as a spacer and having small perforations kind of helped with that as well. But the reason the spacer is also there is, uh, as I say, to try and limit the heat transfer between the two, uh, the two parts. Um, you know, it's almost like when you put an oven glove on and uh, you're getting a baking tray out of the oven, you, you know, it, the, the, the oven glove keeps that heat insulated so it doesn't burn your hand. And it's basically the same sort of thing there. But with the regards to the legality, it's, we can sort of see it's not a purely aerodynamic device either. Um, Red Bull, for example, as you say, they ran a device where they were blowing air straight from the axle. And that was obviously for aerodynamic effect and under the ground, it was a movable aerodynamic device, it was banned. Um, and Ferrari have tried to argue the same thing and Mercedes have argued that it's for temperature and any aerodynamic effect would be sort of in addition to, but not the main purpose of that. And the FIA have seemed to agreed with that. So it remains a strange thing. And we'll look in the final two races to see if the device comes back onto the car. Yeah. It doesn't seem, though, a coincidence that Mercedes' form seemed to go in a bit of a downward turn in the two races where they weren't running it. Now, we know that in Austin um, they had bad rear tyre blistering in particular, but at, uh, in Mexico it seemed to be getting the fronts to work or getting past the, what they call the graining phase of the tyre that was the issue. Could both of those scenarios be related to not running this? Certainly. I think it's... At the moment, it's a little bit inconclusive. Um, and I guess we should stress that Mercedes are saying it's not related, as yes. you'd expect. Yeah, um, it's, if you look at Austin on its own, it's not particularly conclusive. Um, they were asked to take them off, and we know that they suffered a lot with their uh, rear tyre degradation, but correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation. <laughs> um, we also know that they were doing some late changes to Hamilton's car before the race couldn't, because it was in park Fermi conditions, couldn't realign the weights and so they were off on the crossways, or well, that's what they've said mm. post-event. But in Mexico they had a lot of wear on their fronts and didn't run the device and so that kind of suggests that they were running a little bit more bias towards the front uh, to try and protect the rears and ended up uh, chewing up their fronts a little bit. So it's it seems to make sense that that would be the issue. Again, it's a little bit inconclusive, but I think this is something we can wait until uh, the next round in Brazil and find out and see whether that's what's going on.